Hidden and welcome back to Let's Fight the Broken Sword. And first of all, I want to thank you all for being patient with me for not recording. Is it just from, as you can see from like my uh, see from my webcam footage. Yeah, but you can see this, uh, I'm in a different spot. <laughs> I'm, I was actually preparing my room. For, I got I got I have changed my position around. I got some new. I've got a new computer. So when I decided to rearrange everything, so <laughs> that's why I wasn't recording much. I was preparing for that. There was nothing else in the drawer. The congealed coffee wasn't appealing. I wasn't going to find anything in this old desk. It hadn't been used for years. That wasn't going to help. A door like that always has something important behind it. I had to find a way to unlock it.
Here. Full report to follow. But this is too urgent to wait. Arno and Yamada both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in July are in danger. Take great care. X. I wasn't the only one to make the connection between the costume killer murders. I'd been right all along. That was why he had asked to meet me. But what did I know that he didn't? I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to make my reputation and blow Conchons to pieces. I needed to get home fast and start typing. Nico, it's Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne yet? Are you crazy? What's wrong? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. That's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. It's suicidal. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie, two hours ago I told you what I found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in newspapers, Nico. Someone's got to you, haven't they? Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. Pierre Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends. For your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. End of conversation. Good night. This should have been my big break, but I knew there was nowhere else to sell the story. If Ronnie wouldn't print it, nobody would. Bonsoir, Cola. Mademoiselle Cola, my name is Plantard. I need to talk to you about your story, your Pierre Carchon story. How did you know about that? There are people out there, madame, who will be very... Upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. We must? I have information relating to your costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Café de la Chandelle Verte, Rue Alain Cour. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at 8. I'll be waiting. People complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. I'd only been in Paris for a week. But already I'd fallen in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the next minute some clowns blow me up. I knew right away what I was gonna do. I was gonna find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty, and equality, and uh, fraternity. After all, that's why I studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. And this is where we left off. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. Oh. 
Oh my head, never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelly? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. A little bit. Ah, that's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. Hey, wake up! She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. Did that? I wonder if it's him before, I just noticed. They sound not, she sounds very similar <laughs> to the one. I hope the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. The mirror is smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. He was pretty mashed up. He was pretty mashed up. The mirror is smashed. Poor guy. The sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I checked his pockets. Nothing. Hey! Wake up! Hey! Right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Mu. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Marche. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Hey, maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? 
Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl alright, Moo? She'll live if she survives the hangover. She doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd, don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe? I wonder. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Oh, that. I was sure. I just have a similar. Must be what they're at. Excuse me, Mademoiselle. Hi. Uh, my name is George Stowar. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off. Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She didn't even ask how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nico Collard, from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planta. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. I like this. Look, the inspector gave me his card. I didn't know his first name was Augustin. It suits him, I must say. See you again, I hope. Later, Georges. Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, I thought that was it. Those automatics are quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you! Set into the huge gate was a smaller access door. The door was securely locked.
I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ad Din, 1345. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. I noticed it read, so The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The clown had fled into this alley, but there was no sign of it now. There was nothing of interest. I'll see you in the next one.